Hey, this is uh, Dr. Dennis Patterson, and I'm here with Melissa Delamora, one of my advanced practitioners. And uh, we are here to have kind of a conversation about Botox and how it benefits patients in our, our practice. Uh, the interesting backstory um, to Botox being used for migraines. Um, uh, do you know the story behind that? Basically, women who had migraines for years were getting cosmetic Botox, and pretty soon they were coming in saying, my migraines are less, or you know, they've gone away. Um, so they launched a big research on medical uh, use for migraines, and it's been really successful. And I think in the meantime, while they're trying to do these research you know, studies to fine tune how Botox would be used, you know, what, what ended up happening, had a lot of providers doing Botox and everybody had their own kind of secret formula or a secret recipe. And I think that's the great part since the FDA approval is it's kind of standardized the care um, on, on Botox for migraines. I think you were with the practice before Botox came around for treating chronic migraine, is that correct? correct. In my opinion, it's made a big impact on the practice. How have you seen it impact the practice over the um, since before we could do Botox versus now for chronic migraine? I would say it's probably our number one migraine treatment. It is a really good option um, for people not to have to be on medicines. Um, it's been really successful for that. Um, it's been a great treatment for people who are um, working and can't be non-functional with the migraine. It gets them to work. And I look at, you know, before we could offer uh, Botox to patients, you know, I'd always, you know, was kind of leery of the chronic migraine or chronic headache patient because yeah, yeah. we're kind of limited in what type of interventions we could help them out and, and so uh, you know historically if you look at it it was patients who came in and described that you know we could consider uh, greater occipital nerve uh, blocks with steroids um, and in my opinion those were kind of limited maybe they give short-term relief maybe break a cycle but didn't didn't really do anything for patients long term. Um, you know, the second thing is if they had some component of neck pain, then we could do blocks and ablation. Now, I, I thought that was a really good treatment. Um, and, I, and I still think that's an excellent treatment for patients who have that combination. But the problem is, is the patients who don't have neck pain, they're really not a candidate for that, that type of procedure because you're addressing the neck. And if they don't have pain there, then there's no reason why you should be doing that. And then if they fail that, you know, you're really kind of stuck in a and a quandary, right? It was either, you know, a lot of patients on chronic opiates, which, you know, opiates really aren't helpful for migraines. If anything, they can cause rebound headaches, but you're kind of stuck in that, that kind of no man's land. Or then you looked at something, doing something really invasive, and that was occipital nerve stimulators. And those worked for some patients, but for others, they didn't, they didn't do much. It's crazy that, you know, since Botox came to the market, we've been offering patients, I can tell you, I, I probably have only done one occipital nerve stimulator in the last several years. Yeah, I would say the great part about Botox is that with the Botox on board, all of those other things that we used to really only have to offer, those more or less invasive things, those treatments actually work better with Botox. So you might not get 100% relief, but when you do take your migraine med or you know your you know anti-inflammatory, they actually work better and, and it causes a, a better result. Kind of the standard of care is putting patients on a class of medications called triptans and you know unfortunately insurance limits how many of those pills patients can get a month and usually it's you know the magic number is somewhere between six to ten and remember patients would be upset and argumentative like you can't give me more and they didn't understand that it wasn't me that you know wasn't putting a limit on how many they can it was a, an insurance requirement and it's amazing that after you start the Botox treatments where patients were paying cash to get refills on that type of medication um, since their insurance wouldn't cover it, where I see them every three months and I'll ask them, you know, hey, I give you a three month supply of that triptan medication, do you need a refill today? And they'll be like, oh God, I haven't even gotten through the first refill. I've, I've got plenty of that, I don't, I don't need it anymore. Yeah, many of these patients are in and out of the ER, sometimes, you know, on a weekly basis, yeah. um, just, to, just to take care of their migraine for a day sometimes. Yeah. And then after you get them on the Botox, they no longer have to go to the emergency room. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For patients who have never had it done, it's, it's a, a, a very simple procedure. Insurance basically wants to make sure that you qualify for the diagnosis of chronic migraine. And that's a simple diagnosis to make. Uh, the only requirement is, is that you have um, greater than 15 days of uh, pain a month. And usually patients with chronic migraine, they 
you know, always have at least 15 days of pain. And it doesn't matter if it's a little pain or a lot of pain. Each episode of a migraine has to last greater than four hours. Probably the second thing the insurance is gonna require is that you have failed at least two classes of medications. And as we were discussing earlier, patients have seen so many physicians over the years that it's easy to, to have failed two medications over, over the years. And, and so once we find that you're a candidate, then we, we get authorization from the insurance. Patients come in and, and basically we're treating seven standardized muscle groups and the procedure uh, takes no longer than uh, five to ten minutes and uh, you know yeah it's an injection it sounds scary uh, but you're using the smallest possible needle to do the injections and, and a lot of patients really don't don't feel it at all no it's you know poke and sting really um, but you know, the great thing about the series of Botox is it doesn't matter where the migraine is coming from. We don't target certain areas. It's the same 31 injections um, every time you come in and it just does a great job of blanket affecting the entire cascade of migraine. Really, the, the procedure is, is super safe. Um, it's got to be repeated every three months. That's a great bit about Botox is it's a reversible process. You know, you're not doing anything permanent to the patient. So if somebody does have a complication, it, it's going to wear off or go away. Um, I, we've been doing this for, you know, at least eight, nine years now. Have you seen any complications from this procedure? No, no. And the great thing is that the Botox goes into the muscle where we put it and it stays there. So there's no systemic um, contraindication with anything else that they could be using. Right.